Hey guys, it's Paul. So welcome to yet another K611S Sony repair video. This one is fresh in from a guy on Facebook and uh, basically I didn't get much information, just doesn't work. So it's going to be a case of having to play about, see what's going on and uh, we'll see. So upon power on then, so it sounds like Nothing's particularly working. It's very loud, but uh, that's a good sign. So at least a small belt is uh, is working in the in the transport there. Um, yeah, the, the 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 noise is a bit grim, but it could be a couple of things. It could be a belt. It could be one of the uh, the gearing. Uh, it could be at fault. So I won't boy with taking the cover off, but. Once it's off, uh, it looks pretty clean inside. These generally are seal very well. There's no vents or anything. And it's a good sign that this is still in place. And this is still in place because to me it means that nobody's been in it already. Uh, generally really nice and clean. So, fault definitely lies in the transport. Um, I would suggest that the small belt is definitely in place. Uh, given away by the fact that it ejects and uh, that's controlled by this motor the, uh, the capstan motor not so good it's making a, a hell of a racket I'll see if I can get the camera in so you can have a good look as to so apologize for my movement of the camera I will put it steady but I'll put a light on and uh, yeah you can just see on that motor on the left there that is spinning away with the remnants of a belt wrapped around it from what I can see. So this might be a pretty straightforward fix. This might be just something that we can... Uh... Yeah, yeah, definitely the belt. Um, hope, Hopefully this is a pretty straightforward one then, so it's just going to be a usual case of service items. <laughs> Another thing spinning around. Uh, service items, belts, um, pinch roller, and a good clean. I think that belt's going to be a challenge to get off. Right then, so the first thing you do when you're moving these transports is pop the cover off the uh, the transport door there. And keep the power on while you do this. And then pop this cable at the back. And what this will do is that will remove the motor control. So when you turn the unit off, the transport will not close. And you need it open to get it out this way. Um, what I'm going to do is start pulling the plugs. And I'm going to pull a transport out with the face plate in place. Um, really, it, it's just my preferred way of doing things. You can quite happily uh, pull all these cables off and you can do the same job and remove the face plate. It just means you have to pull more cables out and it just takes a little bit longer. So I kind of got this down to a bit of a T now. And uh, this is my preferred way of doing it. Uh, you can change just a pinch roller if you want by just pulling the face plate and you can access the pinch roller fine. But... Why would you do the pinch roller and not the belts? All right, so these are securing with a nice click, which again, to me, indicates that uh, nobody's been in here before. Um, or I would suggest nobody's been in here before anyway. Uh, like, the, the once these are tightened up in the factory, they have that nice, satisfying click. Uh, so it's those two on the top, and then you've got this one here, for, just for the transport. And then the one that's kind of captive inside that hole as well, which is uh, can be a bit of fun and games to put back in. It won't fall in the hole, but um, I haven't tested that theory. And Sod's Law will mean that it'll fall in the hole whenever I do it. So yeah, so holding the transport in your left hand then. Uh, get these out. These can be a little bit tight. And then once this is out, you want to turn the, uh, the entire unit back to where it was uh, on its onto its base. Alright, so once the screws are out, once all your, your, your grey um, multi-pin plugs are out and you've removed your power socket plugs and whatnot off the main board then it's time to remove the transport backwards into the unit itself. Alright, there's a bit of jiggery poker as you can see, I've just got to um, just kind of wiggle these wires about a little bit. What, what I try and do with these plugs is try and disturb them as little as possible. Um, I have actually, I'll be honest, damaged one of these, uh, one of the connections on the main board by being a bit boisterous with the plugs or, you know, um, 
plugging it in and unplugging it about six or seven times so i want to try and avoid any damage not only because it's a pain after i remove the board and then resold the dry connections and whatever else and then once you get all these plugs and wires out of the way this slowly bit by bit will just lift out there we go and as you can see those blue wires that are going to the heads and the power cables and whatnot they're held in place by a bit of metal and there's our transport simple as that now this is open now it needs to remain open so first thing you see there there's uh, the remnants of a belt that's um looks like it's it's half melted got stuck to the capstan and someone's tried to turn it on and then it snapped so we've got half the belt on the actual capstan there and the rest of it presumably is wrapped around the motor so we need to split this it comes apart uh into three bits really so the first thing to do is just remove this nice and gentle so you don't snap it and then you've got it for later keep it nice and neat and then this triangular grey plate on the back is what holds your um, drive belt in place. And that's your drive motor I just unplugged there. Alright, so as I say, it's important to make sure that this transport remains open. You don't start messing about with anything like, you know, uh, any cogs or anything. Don't try and force it shut. Keep it um, in the open setting as you do this work. And then when you put it back together... Then you don't have to mess about with cogs or cams or anything like that. It'll all just pop back together, put it in the machine, and when you turn it on, it'll close by itself. So these two little black screws at the bottom half of this triangular piece of metal first. The second one uh, holds this, uh, this bendy rubberized clip for looking after your wires. And then you've got one more uh, longer gold one once you've got those two out which is just in there. There's like a little plastic washer under this. Usually it kind of stays in place by itself. Uh, if you lose it, it's not the end of the world. You can replace it with any washer, really. Um, it's just uh, so that you're aware when you start pulling these things out. And then once that one's out, this will just separate. And there's your drive motor. And you can see there the, uh, the remnants of the belt, which we're going to have to get off which is going to be really fun honestly <laughs> so what you can do now is you can pull your capstan if you can do it without getting black gunk on it and on the other side of the capstan is a kind of plastic retaining washer so when you pull this capstan out generally the washer will either fall out on the table or it will kind of sit on top of the bushing on the other side of the uh, the transport if i can just find that I just think you can get a, something to grab it with so you can see with this one then so the, 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 the grease on this transport is actually really fresh and nice um, I'll just zoom in and on there that brass bushing I'm sorry but it's very difficult to uh, do this and see there's your plastic washer okay you need to keep that it's easy to make another one if you need to you can just take a slice off the end of a, a ink refill it's the same diameter, and you can just pop that on if you need to. But once that's off, you retain that with your capstan. And then... You can get a bit of better visibility on uh, your secondary motor belt. So this one is what drives your eject and uh, closing mechanism. Now, it's just a case of taking another slice of the sandwich off. And getting in there to get this belt off as well okay so uh what we're going to take off now is these two green circuit boards on the back first of all you need to unplug this black and blue connection which is the led power light for uh the inside the transport so you can see how much tape is remaining and all these brass screws around the outside is what holds it on so first of all then take this one off with the earth connection These screws are all generally the same length, they're about an inch long. Um, however, the one right in the middle, even though it's an inch long, it only bites by about two threads. So you find that as soon as it's um, as soon as you've loosened them two threads off, it's ready to come out. So that goes all the way through into the main transport body. And 
and just keep going around all these screws take these off now as you see when I get this off this is where you start uh, revealing the, the mechanical mechanisms <laughs> of the transport so that's why it's important when I said to make sure that the uh, oh, I think we've still got one screw left there uh, it's important to make sure that you leave this as a cheeky one make sure that um, you've ejected it obviously uh, and you've left the transport open which is what we did at the start of the video don't start turning any cogs or anything like that while this is off you want it to remain in the same position and then when you put it back on uh, it'll all work as desired otherwise you're going to start lining things up again so you can notice that it, once you, you can check that this is uh, give it a little wiggle make sure it's free and then what we've got to do next is we've got to take this black plastic uh, LED housing off from inside. So there's two screws holding this on. I'm just not convinced that that's entirely free actually. I'm just double check I've not missed anything. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. So it's, uh, it's two, black, two black screws at the top inside the transport. And what this does is this will allow you to remove that uh, black plastic face plate there. And this comes off in a, in a kind of lever action. So you're going to open it like a book. It kind of does it for you there. And then it slides out towards you. There's two retaining clips that kind of guide it home. And because we unplugged that black and blue wire, sorry, that blue and white wire, this should just lift out and you can put that off to one side all right so in order to get this last bit of transport out what we need to do is remove that uh, central gear just give it a wiggle make sure it's free and what it is is, is a, a a rubbery plastic washer a little bit like a circlip i suppose on the axle there and what you need to do is try and get that out just put a little bit of pressure underneath it. It will ping, I guarantee it. Again, if you need to make another one, uh, these are easily done by um, taking a slice off the insert out of a big pen. It's perfect diameter, and you can pop that over if you want. And then uh, that just lifts out. And then once that's out, set the transport down, and then you can remove this top bit. Again, this will only be held in now by your secondary belt. There's your rotary encoder, which is that round rotational switch. Everything looks nice and clean here, so I'll pull that gear out in order to get you. That just lifts out. Try not to touch anything else, try not to touch any of the cams, don't turn anything. And there's your secondary belt. Alright, everything looks nice and clean. It's not full of dust. Got some nice new belts from Deck Tech. I think these are about six quid for a pack. Make sure you got the right reference. Transport is in a couple of different Sony machines. So I mean, uh, I think the 520 and there's a K series. It's the same. Uh, so we'll start off with this small one because honestly, I want this back on as soon as possible so I don't knock it and uh, and move anything. So I'll stick it over there and then sit it on these two black prongs, as you can see, just sticking up there. And that'll just sit nice and safe until we get it all back together again. So reiterating again for about the sixth or seventh time, do not turn anything because you're in a world of pain. Well, actually, I'm lying. It's not really a world of pain. It's just more a half an hour or more of unnecessary work, really. Um, inside there, you can see these little mirrors in the reels. These mirrors... I used to detect when the reels are spinning or not spinning. We've talked about this a couple of times on previous videos. And the mirrors are picked up by these two uh, light sensors. And this tells the, the, the transport whether you've come to the end of a tape, whether it's rewinding or fast forwarding. Double check that those mirrors are clean. All right? If they're dusty, if you've got anything on them, then you need to give them a good clean along with the sensors. Otherwise, uh, your tape will play for a couple of seconds and then stop or it won't rewind, it'll fast forward instead, or it'll fast forward and think it's rewinding, they cause a lot of issues on these transports. But these look very good, um, as does the rest of it, if I'm honest with you. So, and now it's just a case of popping that back on, making sure that your, your tape type switches, that's those long leafy switches at the top, don't damage them, because again, they can be quite difficult. 
And what you're looking to do is line this up, get it on the pins, and um, when you're pressing this together, there's a spring underneath one of the wheels that you put it on top of. However, I made a mistake here. I forgot to put that in. What can you do? Otherwise, it would be uh, on our way to success by now. So, don't forget that cog. I honestly thought about editing this bit out, but, you know, uh, I'd like to show you the fact that I am actually human as well. It's always good to have a think of anything you've not done before you start putting things back together. So, uh, line up your uh, leaf springs there. Make sure they're right way around for a start, Paul. Stick them through the gaps at the top very carefully. Don't break or bend them because that plastic is very fragile on these things, especially as we're now, you know, 20, 25 uh, 20 years maybe 25 years since it was new so this is now just a case of line everything up your, your, your small belt is sat on those two uh, black arms that's not going to go anywhere and you should feel a, a tiny bit of spring resistance you have to make sure that that, uh, that square piece of the circuit board there make sure that, that goes underneath the eject arm like so and that should line up quite nicely you feel a little bit of resistance because one of the cams, on, uh, one of the wheels underneath, has kind of got a bit of a, uh, a bit of spring against it, which is you know, it's totally fine. Uh, just when you're going around and tightening everything up, just do it bit by bit, do it sequentially. Make sure you've got nothing caught. You know, um, that seems to be sat on all its legs quite nicely, actually. As you can see, it all sits on these little black plastic legs. There we go. Just a, a little bit more wiggling. And just take your time with this, just go around and eyeball it, line it all up. Again, if you've not touched anything, you've not touched any of the cams, the reels, things like that, then, you know, you've not changed anything. So it's just literally a case of making sure that it's sat flush. And then once you're content that it's sat flush, uh, start putting your screws back in. Remember this little one, as you can see, it goes all the way in, couple of threads and it's done. So don't over tighten it because uh, you're not going to recover them threads. And then just fire all these screws in. What I do like to do is I like to go around and do all the screws first, make sure that we're all equally tight all the way around, and then uh, the one with the earth cable, I'll probably pop that back off and stick the earth cable on. Um, just make sure that all your leaf springs are free, make sure everything's you know uh, as it should be, because there is a potential for damage if something doesn't get lined up correctly when you tighten everything down. Other than that, pretty straightforward. You know, you, you're kind of halfway there, really. And aside from the fact that I know that I've got to clean all the gun coffees uh, off this main drive capstan and, and motor and whatnot. If you're just doing a service, this is honestly maybe half an hour's job. I want you to get it down to a T. Uh, I do quite a lot of these now. And um, every now and again, you know, I'll do a YouTube video. I really like this deck. It's great to service. It's pretty well put together. People will complain a lot about them uh, being you know, it's a 90s deck, but you know, I like them. So what you can do now is you can pop your belt on. As you can see inside there, let's pop the torch on. On the right hand side, you can see that's still sat on those two black legs. What I'm going to do is just pop it onto the pulley. It's as simple as that. Almost as if Sony Engineers designed it like that. All right. So we're good, so you know, 50% in, we're all right. Obviously, if that belt was knackered or it was gummy or you had gunk on your, on your pulleys, you need to clean it first. But for that one, that belt was in pretty good condition. So I'm happy with that. So uh, next then, we can start rebuilding. So pop your, um, I don't even know what the name of this thing is, but uh, this, this arm and cog, this is the only thing uh, other than the screws holding it to the transport so make sure it's centralized and just sit it back on its post and then you're gonna to have to put that washer back on there which can be a bit of a trial but uh, i found that the best thing to do is uh, just sit it on top and just use your fingers to press it home it's usually there's enough softness in your fingers to put it back where it needs to be usually these have got a bit of grease on them as well so it kind of helps it to stay where it needs to be I'm just trying to attempt to get that lined up. Apologies for the fact that you can purely just see my knuckles here, but literally all I'm doing is getting it lined up before I press it home. 
and there we go just a quick double check and that is us home and free give it a little wiggle make sure everything's fine and then we can go and put our uh, black face plate back on again so this slots into two pins at the bottom and then you've got to close it shut like a book all right if you don't do it that way it'll sit on top of the pins and your transport won't work and it'll be way too late before you realize so what i'm going to do is lift it up at the at the, this end push it down into the slots and then it sits nice and flush right it's important that this is done because the transport will catch and something's going to get damaged when you press play all right the two little uh, slots as you can see there's one there and then there's also one over there it just sits into those then you can just screw this in Two small black screws out of all the screws you've got at the moment these should be uh, the smallest of the two trying to do this whilst uh, not blocking the camera and remembering to not block the camera every time is uh, is something I'm not quite yet used to but hopefully I'm getting better there was a lot of comments on my, my last Sony video of you know get a tripod stop wiggling the camera show us what you're doing so i'm trying to take this stuff on board and, and do what i can because i do enjoy making the videos so you know we're always improving all right so now once that's in you need to don't forget to plug that into this black connector that is the power connector for your light which shows behind your tape which is not only is functional but it's also pretty cool and then tuck that behind that uh, circuit board there for safekeeping All right, so that bit's essentially done. Don't forget, if you've done it the way that I like to do it, then uh, this earth cable needs to uh, be repositioned. I just like knowing that the belts are all in place and this isn't going to go anywhere. And then if you've got a bit of style and panache, you can just hook that with your tweezers, pop it back in, and then screw it down. So for the purposes of your small drive belt for your door, that's done. Obviously I didn't particularly need to do it, it was working, but if you have two belts in a set, then why wouldn't you? So, now we're looking at rebuilding the drive motor side. I need to remove this black gunk. So the stuff that's on the capstan doesn't seem to have quite turned to cheese just yet so there's kind of a couple of ways of doing this you can try and pull it it probably won't work it'll, it'll want to remain as oil now ipa does take this stuff off pretty well depending on what it's on so for this on metal it'll come off pretty straightforward um this isn't a brand new sharp scalpel by, uh, scalpel by the way so don't panic too much uh, if it's going near my fingers, I've had this scalpel blade for probably about two years. So uh, even if I do slip, it's simply not sharp anymore. So this is kind of just my preferred way of doing this. There isn't really an easy way of getting this stuff off. It's going to be a case of um, doing what you can. I would get the most off you can before you start going in with IPA. Because the IPA will turn this stuff to kind of like a spreadable liquid it's like margarine for tape decks so the, the the maximum you can get off before you attack it with ipa the better and obviously now i'm watching this i'm cringing a little bit for the fact that i've got a scalpel so close to my hands but honestly it was fine so this is going to be the pain in the backside. Uh, as you can see this is actually wrapped about eight times around this this pulley um I really don't want to start messing about taking the pulley off and with potentially damaging it. So I'm going to do it in situ. So I'm going to do is I'm going to put a slice down this, I think, and then try and peel it off um, in a wanna. Really, because what I found with this stuff is, is that it just gets everywhere. If you get it on your hands, if you get it on, if you wear, even if you're wearing gloves, um, I think that gloves is probably worse. Because at least if it's on your hands, 
uh, some of it soaks in. But this is quite a nice little way of doing it. Uh, I use two cocktail sticks because the the pulley on this uh, on this mortar uh, is thicker in the middle than it is on the outsides, so it just helps you to get it out of these grooves, and just you just got to do what you can. All right, um, I'm going to show a couple of minutes of this as to how long it actually takes, but this this cleaning did take about fifteen about fifteen minutes, I would suggest, and you just got to get it off. Because it'll get all over your new belt. Um, with it being liquidy, it could cause a bit of slipping. But I'm going to do what I can on camera just to show you some bits. But um, I'm going to probably pop off camera. Otherwise, you're just going to be sat here for 15 minutes watching me clean something. Right, so the majority of that is off. And what I'm using now is a dry cotton bud. Because the gunk will tend to stick better to it so if i was using a, a wet cotton bud now with ipa that's just going to go everywhere so uh, it's just a case of push pull um and turn it as you go take off as much as you can and try not to get it everywhere because it's not nice stuff <clears throat> I'm quite surprised this one's gone as bad as it is actually because usually these have just snapped and then that's it. You know, you've got half a belt in a transport and, and fine. As you can see, that's still mountains of it left. Um, I think these these larger belts must just be made of a different compound of rubber or something. And um, they just seem to like to... Uh, go before the uh, the smaller ones do and then some transports you get and the smaller ones gone and the big ones not so that maybe that's uh, that argument's blown out of the water as well but it's just a case you just keep chipping away at this uh i am still i think i've still got uh dry cotton buds here and it's just a case of just persistence really just slowly coming off uh but also persistence not damaging anything Right, so I've got some IPA here in a handy jam jar and I'm just dipping my cotton buds in. The thing about cotton buds is um, the it, once they're wet and they're flat, they don't really have much kind of rubbing power, if that makes sense. So uh, sometimes if, you, if you're really struggling with this, if you've still got loads of it on, you know, a bit of lint-free cleaning paper, you can get it on Amazon rather than kitchen roll because kitchen roll obviously fires out loads of fibres and whatever else. Then... Um, just kind of do what you can with it. All right, so we're definitely getting somewhere with this. Uh, another 20 seconds or so, I think that we've, we've reached the peak of where we're going to... the peak, Not only the peak of my interest, but, uh, you know, the peak of where we're confident it's not going to continue to go over a nice new set of belts. Um, I think I'll do a little bit of cleaning off camera just to save you the hassle. There we go. Got as much off as I could. I had to use a uh, a cocktail stick to get right in there. But uh, next one's a capstan. Then honestly, this should be a bit more simpler. This is just a case again, IPA, and just a bit of pressure. We can actually apply a bit more pressure to this, which makes the job simpler than that plastic pulley. Um, so at least should. Uh, just take, you know, 10 or 20 seconds and this will all come off. Interestingly, when I did the, um, I think it was a KE300 video last week, that capstan was like a composite, whereas these are nice heavy, heavy metal, which is obviously significantly better for uh, for your tape speed, you know, maintain that tape speed. So these are slightly better transports than the, in fact, I'll even go as far as a lot better transports than the KE300. But, you know, it's a three-head deck. Um, you have got the uh, the triple head, triple motor jobs uh, that, you know, are advertised with, with Sony, which is essentially what this is. It's got three motors. Um, you have the other ones that have full dual capstan, but this one is a single capstan. Uh, single capstan, triple motor, I believe. And I think with the the later versions of this tape deck as well, like the 615 or whatever it is, or the 6, 
619, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, they actually started advertising it as such rather than, you know, being a bit cool about it and just putting three head on the front in big letters. So uh, once that's off and while this is off, it, it's, uh, it's a good opportunity to give this uh, the tape side of the capstan uh, axle a nice clean. If you've got a bit of crud or rubbish on there, run some wet and dry over it, but this one's pretty good. All right, so that's ready to go back in now. Get rid of this. And we can start rebuilding the uh, the drive motor side of our transport. As you can see in there, a little bit of muck on top of the heads and whatever else. And I think that potentially that pinch roll is tossed as well. So we'll get in there and give that a clean in a bit as well. And all I've got here as well is some IPA on the end of uh, cotton bud. I hope you enjoy looking at my knuckle. I apologise for that. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and just give that a swab over, just while you've got a bit of access and it's in your hand. You can do this in uh, once the systems, you know, uh, on a shelf or whatever. But I just like to do it now. Right, so I've pulled the uh, the capstan off there, and interestingly, this is this is failed in a, in a different kind of way that I've seen in the past. I don't know why particularly, but it's give us a pull. I've showed you in previous videos how to move these capstan arms, but this is failed with the the the, the rubber inside the uh, the pinch roller itself. The the kind of I don't know whether that was glue or rubber or something that seems to have gone a bit crispy. And there is some micro cracks in the pinch roller, so hopefully I'll go on to uh, my usual website, order one of these up. They're generally not a lot, you know, four or five pounds. But on these, these really affect tape skew and the quality of playback as well. So you need, if you have any signs of this, get it changed. That is toast. All right, so zoom out a little bit now. So it's time to start putting things back into this transport and uh, hopefully we can get everything hooked up again. While you've got the opportunity, you know, once you've got anything off that you wouldn't usually have access to, give it a little skew shout, you know, get the dust off, get the hairs. I've seen bugs in here, I've seen dog hairs, I've seen all sorts of crazy stuff. So um, have a quick look about. If you're all right, then, uh, then good. Make sure that the uh, the transport there it does slide down once you've removed the um, the pinch roller assembly, so it's probably a good case uh, a good idea to just stick that arm back on, uh, just to retain that transport. Really, you can still carry out tests and stuff. You just can't play any tapes. So once we're done, I'll still be able to at least test the basics with this until I can either a find a pinch roller that I might have or order one up. And uh, and get it delivered. It's usually three or three to five days, so um, something else you can do. Look at that, minging. Right, put this out of the way, and I'm going to stick this back on. I think once I give it a clean. So again, um, cleaning this once it's been fitted and in situ and whatever else just uh, is impossible. Or at least very, very difficult. So, get all this rubbish and crap out of here. The spring there is quite important, actually. So, when the transport goes up into play mode, um, it's the spring there that controls the pressure that it has on, as opposed to uh, hard 100% pressure. You've got that nice spring there. So, it's make sure that's seated properly. And then what I'm going to do just for now with no pinch roller on it, I'm going to fire this back in purely to keep that transport from falling at my lap once I'm putting it back together. And then once we get a new pinch roller, I'll just fire that in and um, just make sure you kind of got a seat there, seat it home properly. Otherwise it'll flap about all over the place. And that's done so by pushing the transport up a little bit and push it until it clicks. Cool. I will go back to that and fit a roller, but for now it's doing me a favor. So again, you note that I've not moved anything. We're going to put this uh, capstan through. It goes through that brass bush in there. And 
do not forget that you've got your plastic washer to go on the other side. And you'll see once I push this through and I pop that plastic washer over the top, uh, it, it's more than sufficient to hold the weight of it and keep it in place. You just stick that on the top. And then get something reasonable and press that into place. Like so. All the way at the bottom, make sure it's nice and flush with the brass bushing on the end. That's going to stop wound fluttering all sorts of tape skew and playback issues. Make sure it's nice and tight and everything's good. And as you can see, that tiny little plastic clip retains that really well. Right, so now on to the tricky part then. Um, I found the easiest way of doing this is to try and sit this belt over the capstan and then hold the transport uh, vertically so that gravity just keeps it sitting on there basically and then when you reintroduce that triangular piece of metal you've got left with your drive motor you've got to kind of hook it and seat it at the same time it, it, it does work pretty well if I'm honest with you um, just like that as Paul Daniel says Paul Daniels doesn't say that it was Tommy Cooper actually I'm lying now and then get the motor and just hook that on get the tension on the belt and spin and pop it home and you just got to put those holes they, they sit on like plastic seats and honestly once they're on the plastic seats then you're laughing and then just screw it back together simple as that there's nothing else to worry about at this stage the uh, the the way that the, the pulley is designed on the motor will centralise it onto the capstan anyway for you. So uh, you don't have to worry about it coming off once you've uh, once you've fitted the belt. So this is in hindsight, I'm kind of voiceovering this because it was quite a, a busy day in the house. That isn't the right screw for that hole, which I'll find out in about 10 seconds when uh, I realise that I'm missing a black screw. Does anybody have any preference? Anybody watching this? Is it better if I do a voiceover like this? Or is it better if I talk about it while I'm doing it? Um, still still kind of learning with this, but the, the voiceover side of things allows me to record at any time of day or night when anybody's about. And then I can record the voiceover afterwards when it's a bit quieter. And I can go into probably more detail right? instead of trying to concentrate and talk at the same time. But yeah, let me know. Um, what I found with YouTube is that people love to comment and, you know, good or bad, they like to tell you, which I can take that. I can take it on board. So don't forget this screw. Uh, the correct screw, the black one, is holding your cable mount. And this gold one, the one that's about an inch long, that is going to go down the centre. If I just move my hand out of the way. That's going to go down the centre at the back where the motor is. Don't forget this has that plastic nylon washer underneath it. If you've lost it, any washer will do, honestly. The, the, the two seats on the bottom are holding that level. Uh, you can plug your motor back in now. All right. Now, tie your cables up, make it nice and neat. And in truth, we're about ready to fire this back on now. I like to keep it looking as OEM as possible. So uh, there's a reason why that's there. Whatever engineer decided to, to use it or fit it or create it. So why would you not use it? So now's the fun part then. So now what I want to do is try and get this, uh, the, the, this transport back in. And... Uh, just make yourself a little bit of clearance there, get all these wires out of the way. Um, 
and just kind of do what you can. And what you've got to do with this one is, as I say, we've kept the transport open throughout. We've not messed about with the, the, the open closed motors or the cogs or anything. So you don't have to mess about plugging it in in order to get it open, etc., etc. So if there's anything in the way, as you can see, here, I kind of went back on my own little ethic there for, for speed and just pulled these second two cables out, which in hindsight made things a lot easier. So feed the door in first. Once so you can get it in past these cables. Feed the door in first and then twist it up. Watching out for those leaf switches on the top of the face plate. Now it's only four screws to take that face plate out, but it is a load more connectors. Some of them are very fragile, especially those ribbon ones, and I don't like messing about with them if I can help it. And generally, once you slide the transport home, line up with two screws on the top, lift the face plate about a millimeter, so just a tiny bit, and then that will allow you to put the transport underneath the screw holes, and then that's it. Your transport's faded. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the, uh, the top screws is your gold screws, uh, the domed head gold screws, and the domed head black screws are for underneath. Don't forget. There's no worries about alignment issues or anything like that because your transport's totally separate from the rest of the unit. But we're in. Uh, we're kind of in the home stretch now, provided everything works. Now, obviously, in this case. We saw that the belt was broken, you know. Um, you might find that once you plug it all back in, you've still got a secondary fault, but that's fine. That's all part of the adventure. Um, I might find on this one, once I put it all back together, it's still not working. But, well, uh, it's, it's one of the joys of repairing things, you know. Sometimes you have more than one fault. So stick all your, your connectors back in. They're all different shapes and sizes, so you can't mix them up, which, again, is hugely handy. Uh, when you're doing work like this, you don't particularly have to take photos or anything. Uh, this one's black, for instance, and you can push it in the black. Female part on the main board. Right, this one's the same size as the black one, but it's white. You know, so like magic, you've just got to uh, spend a second and try to remember where you've unplugged it from. Because a lot of times you can forget even in 10 seconds. Right, be gentle with these because the uh, the connections on the boards can be a bit dry over time, especially on these larger ones. So this one is red to red. These are your power connectors for your transport, and uh, the power so the smaller grey one there is your power supply for your um, recording head. And that just pops on there. This is the most fragile one, this one, because it's so tall and thin. Just be nice and gentle with it. All right, make sure everything's seated, and then we'll take her for a spin. Let's lift this up again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire these, uh, once I reposition the camera a little bit, it's going to fire these two screws in at the bottom of the transport as well, purely because I... Um, I just don't like the idea of it flapping about, potentially causing a bit more damage, especially to the electrical components. Again, from experience, uh, these can be fragile in certain places. And if you break something as well, say if you knock a capacitor or something like that, it's extremely difficult to find the one uh, that's the cause of the issues. All right, nice and tight. So I think we're almost ready for a test. Don't forget this natty little connector. You know, if you can do a job, do it properly. This one connects all your grey, uh, not ribbon cables, but the, the, the flat cables. Keeps them all tucked away nice out the way. All right, so I'm gonna plug it in and see what happens. All right, excellent. So, with us not touching anything crazy, transport's closed, We've got no crazy noises or anything like that. The capstan is spinning, which it should be with these decks all the time. And uh, the buttons all seem to be working as well. 
Bear in mind, I've got no pinch roller in at the moment, so uh, potentially can't really test the tape, but I can test everything else. Right, so I'll fire tape in and see if it actually spins it or plays it or what. All right, so for a basic function test, we appear to have fixed our problem. Tape one switch is working, so the uh, the selector is working. Let's try a bit of calibration. Yep, these functions are now available now that it's detected there's a tape in the transport. Uh, so not bad. As you can see there, the capstan is spinning. If you can see on the camera, um, it does spin all the time, which does cause a bit of premature wear at the motor sometimes. You know, uh, I think that's potentially why these drive belts and motors fail so often is because of you know the use and constant spinning but uh, i'm going to keep that to one side swap out our pinch roller and don't lose your axle for it either because that'll be fun to uh, try and replace all right then so here we are um it's a couple of days later i've finally got a pinch roller sorted and uh, i didn't bother with fitting a pinch roller it's just a case of putting it on the axle and then popping it into the transport so we're all back together case is back on and I've cleaned the front up a little bit, pulled the gauges out and give it a bit of a clean out. Um, I have tried a couple of tapes on it, seems totally fine. But I'm just going to show you what I would go through now, just to double check everything. So I'll get yourself a tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a calibration of the bias. And what this does with these decks is, this will check that your recording head's working fine. And that your recording bias is good and your head's clean. Because if this didn't work, it wouldn't be picking up the high tones. It wouldn't be recording properly and it wouldn't be picking up the low tones. So this kind of clears up an awful lot of things all in one go. So again, as you've seen in the other videos, press the calibration button. And then I'm going to press record. And then I'm going to press play. And what this is doing at the moment is this is recording high and low tones at the same time and listening to them on the other head. So this is good that it's picking up the high tones. Sometimes on these decks, uh, it doesn't like picking up the high tones very well. So it gives indication the head's in good condition. It gives indication uh, that the playback head's in good condition as well. So I'll play about with the level and get our low level up a bit. And then we'll knock the bias the opposite way. This is a type 1 cassette as well, which is pretty good. So when you put in a type 2, they'll default to better higher tones. But that is absolutely perfect. So for recording purposes, you know, this is exactly what Sony want to give you. Um, I personally like to record with over biasing, so like that. With uh, the high tones a little bit higher, I would probably record um, about there. You've got a bit of flutter there, basically, because it's a, it's a used cassette. I will probably record about there. So it's just itching into a little bit over bias on the high tones. But for the purpose of that test, that's testing about four things at once, uh, and I'm happy with that. If your recording head wasn't working properly, or your playback head was dirty, or the azimuth was off, or anything like that, this would not work in this way. Um, you'd find that um, the bias wouldn't affect anything, or the levels would be off. So, we're happy with that. So, and this is an old used AD60. So, with a new cassette, uh, those levels would be amazing. With an old used cassette, I'm really happy with the way that that's turned out. So the next thing is speed check. Right, so our speed check tape is in. It's important that you get a good calibrated speed check cassette. Uh, I purchased this one off eBay, I think it was about a tenner. And uh, it's guaranteed to have been recorded on a correct, uh, correctly set up deck. It's been checked on a quartz deck, you know, um, because otherwise if you're trying to create your own one, how do you know your recording's correct in the first place? So we'll press play on this. And then what I've got here is our usual um, spectrum analysis application. And what this will do is you keep calibration tone. Three thousand hertz. So it's three K. And there we have. 3k minimal wow and flutter oh, the screen's just decided to uh so i'm happy with that speed there that won't be noticeable 
I'll just stop that. So my pull at speed there, um, the, it's a little teeny, teeny squidgy bit up and down around 3000 hertz, but good enough for a cassette deck. Uh, I'm not going to mess about the azimuth on this one because if the azimuth was off, that bias would not be working on your calibration. So I'm very happy with that. All the, uh, the locking compound is still on the head. Uh, so yeah, that brings us to the close of another one of these repair videos for this one. And there's only one thing for it now, and that is Credence. So, while I'm here as well, we shall have some uh, Green River. And I just want to check this comes up as Type 2, and it does. So, I'm going to enjoy some Credence and a cup of tea. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and uh, any comments or anything, please feel free to... To, to put them in the, in the comment section below hopefully i've done a bit better this time use a tripod and um you know actually showed you the repair but uh, i do enjoy these decks these are my absolute favorite decks i'm gonna look out for an es deck i think next and do that the transport's very similar and hopefully i can upload a video of that soon so again if you like my videos please consider subscribing it really helps i'm looking to hit a thousand subscribers and we'll see where we go from there so have a great day See you later.